There are no strings on me. Hey, what is going on everybody? It is your boy Carnage, your Primitive AK here, back with another video for you guys today. Today we are back with another video covering some tips and tricks for Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe. We've gained quite a decent amount of subscribers on the channel recently, so make sure you guys hit that sub button, turn on those post notifications so you guys never miss a video. And if you're a part of that demographic of roughly around 90% of my fan base uh, that actually watches my videos on a regular basis but hasn't recently subbed, make sure you guys hit that sub button so you guys never miss a video. So today we're going to be discussing how to win more gunfights and how to improve your aim inside of, inside of black ops cold war i feel like this is a pretty highly searched topic and a lot of people want to know how to improve at the game because it's obviously it's a new game new things to learn and a lot of stuff to uh kind of reflect on in your gameplay so without further ado we're going to go ahead and jump into the top nine best uh options and ways to improve your gunfights and also improve your aim as well so first things first uh, change your settings. This is the first thing you want to do before you even touch the game and hop into a pub match. You want to make sure that your settings are all straight because there are a lot of settings in this game that will actually help you get better at the game, such as sensitivity, your aim down sight sensitivity, and also a big new setting for consoles known as field of view. This is nothing new to PC players. You guys have probably been having field of view settings since the 90s as far as I can remember, but field of view is a very big setting that can actually help you see more of your game and help you see enemies that you would not be able to see on previous CODs such as Modern Warfare on uh, on on consoles. Uh, so that's a big setting that you guys want to make sure that you're monitoring. I actually did a full settings guide for both console and PC, so if you guys would like to go ahead and check that out. Link to those videos will be in the description as well as an annotation on screen uh, throughout the video showcasing previous uh, Black Ops Cold War videos, so make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. Number eight, and this is another big one, uh, look at your mini-map a lot. All right. A lot of people are not looking at their mini map. I'm not sure why. Uh, it's a fairly easy thing to do. Um, I guess a lot of people are more worried about what's in front of them. Now, don't overlook the mini map too much. Like, don't look at it all the time. But the mini map is not the same as Modern Warfare. Now, in Modern Warfare, if an enemy shot their weapon, you would not see it on the mini map. You would actually see it on some stupid thing they called the compass. And it was pretty much useless in my book. I never used it. But in this game, uh, for those that have never played previous CODs. This is actually the traditional radar that we've had in every single Call of Duty since Call of Duty first came out. So it can you can get a lot of information, especially since people are not using suppressors on this game. You can get a lot of information just by looking at your minimap and uh, help predict spawns as well. And that brings us to our next big point for improving your aim and also your gunfights. Do not, and I repeat, do not drop shot on this game at all. Just don't do it. I promise you, you're making yourself... Uh, you're, you're, you're making yourself a worse player by drop shotting. I see it all the time. The only way that you can drop shot on this game is by using a specific uh, stock that is available on the weapon. If you look through your attachments, you'll see an attachment that actually allows you to aim down sight when going prone. I, I forget what it's actually called, but there is actually an attachment that can help you do that. But I don't recommend really using that as I feel like it's pretty much useless in my opinion i don't feel like you're getting enough benefit out of it uh which is why i even i don't use it what you're going to want to be doing however is uh jump shotting you're going to want to make sure that you're jump shotting a lot now jump shotting does feel a little bit weird on this game for whatever reason i'm not too sure why but jump shotting is much more rewarding than trying to drop shot on this game simply because of the fact that you actually lose your ads when you're going drop shot and that's why you don't want to do it the only way you can drop shot like i mentioned is by using that attachment Moving on, and that brings us to our next big point, is to avoid using attachments that put you at a disadvantage. So, this is this goes hand in hand. I've seen this mistake happen in every single Call of Duty, especially Modern Warfare, which is why I did so many class setup videos to try and stray people away from doing that. I see people putting sniper scopes on assault rifles. Like, what in the heck are you thinking? You don't want to do that, okay? You want to make sure you're using the right attachments that are actually going to help you. Uh, you shouldn't even go as far as like a three times scope on an assault rifle, which even I wouldn't recommend doing. You want to use uh, certain sights that apply to the certain weapon. For example, you want to make sure that you're using like a red dot on a an, on assault rifle or a 
no sight whatsoever on a SMG because most of the SMGs don't really need them. Stop putting attachments on weapons that don't help you at all. You got to pay attention to what the attachments are actually doing in the game as and also their disadvantages that they provide you throughout the game. So you want to make sure that you're staying paying attention to that because some attachments are actually worse than others and people think just because it gives you let's say extra damage you're losing let's say 30% of your recoil and your gun's going to be jumping all over the place all because you wanted extra damage. So this can help you win your gunfights a lot. Sometimes recoil management is more important more important than the damage. Uh, if you guys notice some of my class setup videos, I'm using a certain attachment that isn't as high as the other one, but I'm using it because I want to maintain decent recoil. And this brings us to our next big tip, number five, pre-aim a lot. All right, this is a COD where you really can't be caught with your pants down, simply because some of the ADS speeds on, this, on these weapons are a little bit on the slow side, and on top of that, you know, the time to kill gives you more, more, more room to kind of work around things. So you want to make sure that you're pre-aiming a lot. You guys notice if you think someone is going to be around a certain corner, don't just sprint headless around the corner. I see this all the time. You want to make sure that you're pre-aiming because a lot of times uh, you'll see people running around the corners and if you're pre-aiming, you'll be ready for the gunfight. Meanwhile, they're going to take roughly about two to 300 milliseconds to bring up their weapon. That's an extra 300 milliseconds of advantage over your player. So you want to make sure that you're pre-aiming around those corners so that way you're ready for the gunfight. Don't excessively pre-aim, however. Only pre-aim where you think someone is going to be. For example, mid-map, you could pre-aim mid-map. People are always going to go down mid-map because that's just what people do. If you're on a head glitch on left side, for example, on garrison, uh, that little catwalk area that people go on, pre-aim that because people are always going on that lane. Just be mindful of where your teammates are and also pay attention to where the enemies are going to be. Moving on, uh, this is another big one that even I sometimes take advantage of a lot, and that's to just take five to 10 minutes to just go around shooting bots for a little bit. Uh, this can help improve your aim a little bit, help you adjust your sensitivity. Like I mentioned, you wanna change your settings so that way your sensitivity and ADS sensitivity are in line. So taking roughly five to 10 minutes, even 15 minutes or so to just shoot some bots in private match, figure out what sensitivity works best for you is a great way to improve your aim. And a lot of people don't take advantage of it. You, you gotta remember Treyarch put Call of Duty has private matches for a reason. It's not just so you can 1v1 your friend for a dollar, but it's there so that way you can help practice certain things in private match so that way you don't have to deal with the stresses of public matches all the time. And this will certainly help you out with winning a lot of gunfights. Moving on, I want to take uh, want to mention this is another big one that people are making a mistake on. Use different weapons. Now, if you notice the gameplay uh, throughout this video, at the time I'm making this commentary, I don't know what gameplay is going to be on it. It'll most likely be a uh, tactical rifle gameplay. And this goes in hand in hand with a lot of the tips that I've mentioned. Use a different weapon that will challenge you a little bit. For example, uh, I'm going for dark matter for every single weapon, which means I have to get gold for every single weapon. This is going to give me a lot of experience in using every single weapon, good or bad, in Black Ops Cold War. And I'll already have a, uh, an advantage over a lot of players that are still using the same weapons, such as the MP5 and the M16. So let's say, you know, those two guns get nerfed. If you're stuck using those two weapons, now you have to relearn how to use a different weapon that may have more recoil and less damage and using a different weapon will help you will help you prepare for any time a gun gets nerfed so let's say the mp5 gets nerfed down the road which it probably will because it is the most broken gun in the game uh it, you'll actually have experience by using other weapons so that way you won't be stuck using the same one over and over i've already got, had a lot of experience using some of the worst weapons in the game and the gun that I'm using right now, which is the DMR-14, is actually one of the worst guns in the game. And I've managed to actually get a nuke with it, which you guys are going to be seeing in tomorrow's video. Uh, so make sure you guys go ahead and check that out. So just make sure you're using different weapons, but don't use attachments on those weapons that are actually going to uh, put you at a disadvantage. And moving on to number two, uh, take advantage of the movement in this game. Slide cancel a lot. I may have a tutorial out soon on slide canceling, so you guys can go ahead and check that out. Uh, slide canceling is a tactic where you basically slide around a corner, you cancel mid-slide, so that way you can ADS your weapon and catch a lot of people off guard. This is a tactic that I'd say a solid 80% of this player base is not taking advantage of. Uh, you, the movement is there for a reason. You need to take advantage of it. And if you, if you if you take full advantage of the movement system in Call of Duty games, you will be better, and I promise you, you will be better than a solid 90% of this player base, maybe even 95, because there are a lot of people that are just simply sprinting around corners. They're just sprinting, sprinting, sprinting. They're pre-aiming, pre-aiming, which like I said, you should be doing, but you know, you gotta use the movement system as well. So 
a lot of times what I do is, uh, if you're not going to pre-aim around a certain spot, what I do is I slide cancel around the corner so that way I can catch the enemy off guard and they'll never expect me around that corner. And last but not least, this is a pretty tough one to do, even I struggle with this one a lot, is to predict enemy movement and spawns. This is a very, this, this one takes time to actually learn. Uh, what I do is, every Call of Duty, I try to learn the spawns, and to this day, you know, I'm still learning spawns in a lot of CODs, um, but I understand them to a point where I can predict where people are going to be at all times. What you want to do is, to make this one work, pay attention to where your teammates are at all times on the game. You can look at your mini-map, uh, and this will tell you where your teammates are. Wherever your teammates are, the enemy is guaranteed to be somewhat diagonal to where your, where your teammates are at all times. So let's say you're at C flag, you have B flag as well. Nobody's at A flag. Obviously, that means they're going to be at A flag. If you see people, your teammates are on your right side, all your teammates are on right, there is a 99% guarantee that they are all going to be on the left side. So that's why I said, pay attention to where your teammates are. It'll help you give you a general idea of where the enemies are going to be at all times. And also, predicting enemy movement. Uh, a lot of times what people do is they're going to go through the same lanes over and over. If you play a lot of matches in Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, you'll notice people go down the same lanes over and over. This, this should be an absolute, you know, a light bulb in your head to know that you should be pre-aiming those spots because there are always going to be people that are running down those same areas over and over and over. So you want to make sure that you're paying attention to enemy movement. And you can easily predict what people are going to do. For example, I play in a lot of sweaty lobbies sometimes. Uh, obviously, people are jump shotting around corners. So you may not see the same players that I play because of skill-based matchmaking. But a lot of times what I do is I predict that people are going to jump shot around the corner. So I pretty much pre-aim that certain spot. And 9 times out of 10, I get the kill because they're not ready for me because I predicted that they were going to be there. It's a very hard tactic. And I, I will say this is why I listed it as the last one is because it is very difficult to manage. Um, but but uh, for the lesser skilled players out there that are struggling with this, you're not really going to have too many people jump shotting simply because your lobbies are, you know, not as sweaty as mine. So you can easily just pre-aim a certain spot and they're just more than likely going to be walking around that corner instead of jump shotting. Guys, I hope this helped you guys win more gunfights. Hope you learned something new. If this helped you guys out, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. Tomorrow's video will be a new gameplay with the DMR-14. I will catch you guys in the next one. However, it's your boy Carnage or Primitive AK. Signing out. Peace out, fellas.